Good morning. It is Wednesday, I believe. Isn't it, Chris? <laughs> is it Tuesday? Well, it ain't Thursday, is it? What? I don't even know what day it is, y'all. I've been so busy. For heaven's sakes. Um, Lord, I thought it was Wednesday and it's Thursday. Chris, um, had to tell me it was Thursday and I looked at the calendar. But anyway, um, good morning and I'm just on my laptop so it's not the best view. But um, I just wanted to say I do feel better today, praise the Lord. Yesterday I just felt terrible. And the last few days I've been having a hard time with my muscles and I know it's fibromyalgia. And anytime I have to take an Imitrex for my headache, it affects my muscles. So I've just had a hard time over the last few days. So hopefully um, I won't get another headache and I'll be good to go. Um, we're going to talk about chapter 29 today, the doctrine of the church. And, um, so I haven't, I haven't been getting dressed up for y'all in the mornings because there's really no reason for me to, y'all know who I am. And, um, anyway, I know that sounds silly, but I just, uh, don't want to take the time to put on makeup just for 10 minutes. when I know I'm not going to be videoing, uh, much live as far as my face goes. Um, we are about to open the book, so I hope y'all tune back in, um, and we're going to talk about the doctrine of the church and uh, see what um, the Bible has to say about it. So I'm going to sign off, and then I'm going to share my screen with the book, and then we will review our Bible study. But let's say our prayer first. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for today. Thank you for this Thursday, and thank you... Um, that you would allow us to be able to study your word together through social media. Um, there are some blessings in social media, quite a few actually, and we thank you for that. Can uh, I hope that you keep us from uh, temptation today and that we would shine our lights and be good examples of you while we're here on this earth, and that includes, of course, today. So if there's anything you would have us do um, I pray that we would notice it today and do it for you. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Okay, so I will sign off and I will sign back on. Hey, good morning. Um, it's Tammy with Real Southern Woman. And today we are going to review chapter 29. Uh, the Doctrine of the Church, out of 30 Days to Understanding the Bible. This is a book review, and the book, again, the name is 30 Days to Understanding the Bible. And the book is written by Max, M-A-X, Anders, A-N-D-E-R-S, if you're interested in getting a copy of the book. We have one review left after today, so tomorrow we'll actually finalize our book hard to believe that this is the 29th Bible study in this book, and tomorrow we're going to do the Doctrine of Future Things, and that will finish it up. Um, so this is the Doctrine of the Church, and um, I'll just start out um, reading this area, I mean this section for you guys, and let's see what it has to say. It says the church is to be the physical representation of Christ on earth now that he has returned to heaven. <coughs> Excuse me. What Christ said, we are to say. What Christ did, we are to do. The message Christ proclaimed, we are to proclaim. And the character Christ manifested, we are to manifest. The world can no longer see Christ living on earth. He is removed physically, though he lives in the hearts of his children. Because the world can no longer see Christ living on the earth, it should be able to get a pretty good idea of Christ by looking at his church. It says the church is a wonderfully important institution that has fallen into some disregard in the United States lately, even among Christians. It says it happened partially because many in the Mainline denominations abandoned the historic fun fundamentals of the faith for a form of Christianity that denied the very things that were distinctive to Christianity. When that happened, the church lost its justification for its existence 
and attendance began to drop. Then a remnant church exerted itself, and it's made up largely of newer denominations and independent churches, as well as some churches and denominations that held firm or renewed themselves. The renewed churches disdained the theological shallowness of churches that had denied their faith, and as a result, they threw the baby out with bathwater. Out with the theology. The all, wait a minute, out with the theologic, theological, I'm sorry, y'all, out with the theological shallowness went deep respect for tradition, church authority, and the clergy. But as Augustine said, he cannot have God for his father who does not have church for his mother. The time has come for a resurgence of respect for the church, the great bride of Christ, and to hold her with the same regard with which God holds her. The time has come to believe Jesus' promise, I will build my church. We humbly ask him, what would you have me to do? The four major subdivisions of doctrine of the church are the first one is universal church. The universal church is the church totally of all believers in Jesus. The universal church is the church totality is what it says of all believers in Jesus. It says the universal church as called the body of Christ in Colossians 1.24, refers to all people in all parts of the world who became Christians since the beginning of the church and who will become Christians before Christ returns. The church began on the day of Pentecost in Acts chapter 2 and will culminate when Christ returns. Christ is the head of the church, Colossians 1.18, and the universal church is to be the representation of Christ on earth, collectively doing his will. The central passage is, and I say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Matthew 16, 18. Matthew 16, chapter, uh, verse 18. So he says, and I will say to you, and I say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Okay, so number two is the local church, a local assembly of believers organized to carry out the responsibilities of the universal church. The church is not a building, but people. At any given time and place, Christians are to band together to carry out the responsibilities of the universal church. As such, they organize to govern themselves, select spiritual leaders, collect money for ministry, observe baptism and communion, exercise church discipline, engage in mutual edification and evangelism, and worship God. The central passage, Paul, called as an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, to the church of God, which is at Corinth, 1 Corinthians 1, verses 1 and 2. The third subdivision of the church is leadership. Those in the church worthy of being followed because of their spiritual maturity. Leadership in the local church is invested in pastor teachers, elders and deacons and deaconesses. The scripture appears to give freedom as to how this leadership is organized and functions, but it is not, but it is quite specific about the spiritual qualifications. Only spiritually mature people are to be given high positions of spiritual leadership in the church. The central passage. An, over, an overseer then must be above reproach, the husband of one wife, temperate, prudent, respectable, hospitable, able to teach, not addicted to wine, I'm not even going to try to say that word, 
what's that word, Chris? Pugnacious? Not addicted to wine or pugnacious? Pugnacious? P U G N A C I O U S. <clears throat> but gentle, uncontentious, free from the love of money, he must be one who manages his own household well, keeping his children under control with all dignity, and not a new convert. And he must have a good reputation with those outside the church. Number four subdivision is membership. Definition, belonging to the universal church and a local church. When a person becomes a Christian, he or she immediately and automatically becomes a member of the universal church, the body of Christ. Throughout church history, local churches have had varying requirements for membership that range from very limited to very strict. This appears to be a point of freedom given local, ch freedom given local churches in the scripture. An important point, however, is that everyone should be a part of a local church. God never intended for Christians to try and make it alone. Placing oneself under spiritual authority and in mutual ministry with others is essential to spiritual health. The central passage, let us consider how to stimulate one another to love and good deeds not forsaking our own assembling together as the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day drawing near. Hebrews chapter 10, verses 24 and 25. So we have the universal church. We have a local assembly of believers. Uh, we have... Um, Wait a minute, I gotta start over. The universal church is a totality of all believers in Jesus. The local assembly of believers blank to carry out responsibilities of the universal church. Lord, I can't never remember these words, y'all. I have to go back. Let me just go through them one more time. I mean, I kind of got it. I mean, I got the gist in my head. I just can't use the words he uses every time. Universal and believers are the first subdivision and blank definitions. So you've got the universal church is the church, the totality of all believers in Jesus. Then you've got the local church is the second subdivision which is an assembly of believers organized to carry out the responsibilities of the universal church. Then you've got leadership as the third subdivision, those in the church worthy of being followed because of their spiritual maturity. And four, membership, belonging to the universal church and a local church. And that is the doctrine of the church. Um, I hope that some of y'all, if you're not in church, would consider uh, maybe visiting a couple of nearby churches, but I am thankful that you do come on here at least and um, join in with other like-minded uh, Christians to learn about the Lord. Um, and I mean, years ago, people did have churches in their homes, but it is nice to be a uh, part of a local assembly. Chris and I actually stopped going for a while because of some things that happened. And um, we, we have started back and I am truly enjoying it. Um, and we haven't, jo we haven't joined the church yet, but we are uh, thinking about it. So maybe if, um, you know, you feel like it on Sunday mornings, you could get out and visit a church. And I really love the people in this church so far. Everybody is very sweet and kind. And it seems um, like a place that me and Chris would belong to. So let's just uh, 
go ahead and tomorrow we're going to talk about the doctrine of future things and of course it will be our last um, session in this book so I'm gonna have to try to find something else for us to follow and I'm sure I can do that I, I already have a good idea and so uh, let's uh, I guess I will see you tomorrow I've already said my prayer on the first video so y'all have a wonderful, wonderful and blessed day and thanks for tuning in.